All right, we're live. Hey there, thanks for joining the Firehose Project info session. I'm Brita, I'm a student advisor here at the Firehose Project, and we have Ken, our CTO and co-founder. Uh, and we're here to talk to you about the Agile Team Project and what that involves, um, what that experience is like, why it's important. Um, and so we will jump right into that. If you have any questions, feel free to comment those. Um, and you're also welcome to send in questions at thefirehoseproject.com if we don't have a chance to uh, answer those live and we'll get back to you quickly via email as well. So um, to start today, let's uh, dive into the Agile Team Project and what that is all about and why that's important. Um, so Ken, uh, as I said, our CTO and co-founder, and he actually helped design and create our first Agile Team Project and turn it into kind of what it is today. Um, so I'd love to hear a little bit about that and we can share with everybody. Uh, if you want to talk about maybe like how that started and why we started it uh, and what that looks like. Yeah, so the Agile Team Project is something that I'm really excited about and it's one of the things that I think makes Firehose really special. Um, the Team Project, it started out when we had many people who were looking to get a job as a junior web developer after the program and they wanted to get some real world experience working with other people because the best products in the world are built by many different people and it's important to sort of get uh, some experience doing that before you actually jump into the real world and start applying for jobs and stuff like that. So uh, we worked with the first students and we wanted to make it complicated enough so it would mirror like real world applications that uh, potential job um, uh, like a interview that would look good on interviews and stuff like that. So we decided to come up with a pretty complex idea for a project and that idea was a chess project um, and we ended up building it out. Um, it started and we ended up organizing it and streamlining it and making it so um, the different tasks and responsibilities got broken out between different people and it takes about eight weeks to get through and uh, I think uh, it's a really great experience and it looks great on your resume to sort of be able to share your code on your portfolio and GitHub and showcase some of the pull requests which is a fancy way to say code suggestions that you make on the project and just work like you do in the real world so um, it's one of the things that I'm really excited about about um, our um, uh, the Firehose project. Cool, so what does that kind of look like if you're a student in the Firehose project and you start the Agile Team project, like what does that kind of look like when you have your first session and you meet your team and how does that how is that structured and you know what is what does that workflow look like a little bit? Yeah, so the team project starts off where we need to sort of get people together and sort of build up the team. So uh, when certain milestones get hit in the course of the project, uh, you'll be reached out to by uh, one of our um, uh, web developers, Matt, who will uh, set up your group, find a time that works for everybody, and kick off a video chat that's uh, just a, a normal like Google Hangouts type thing. So the entire team comes together in a Google Hangout, and the mentor sends out the link and sort of sets everything up. And then the mentor will run through a number of different things. So the first thing that will happen is introductions. The people of the team don't necessarily know each other. They've never worked together. So giving a quick introduction about sort of who you are, what your background is, what your goal is, and and just to start off the team with sort of building the relationship with both your, the mentor and the other teammates that you're going to be working pretty closely with. After that, they talk about what we're building and they go into a little bit more depth about sort of like, okay, what is the chess application? Why are we building it? A lot of the stuff that we're talking about here and the details along the way. Uh, it's important to note that the specific code that you end up building on the team project is a lot less important than the process of building it out. It's the process of working with other people, making the pull requests and doing all of the thing that will help teach you all the concepts that you need um, and then the mentor will walk through some of the tools that we use and the tools we use are slack and trello and a few other things too um, it's not terribly important the tools that we use but we do need to use some tools to make it so the team works and the, the collaboration works really good Finally, we break down the, the project into individual tasks that different team members can volunteer for and different people volunteer for different tasks and they end up sort of building out the features and working together and using Slack, which is a chatting program that allows people to collaborate so um, 
people oftentimes will jump on like pair programming sessions with each other between uh, the weekly calls and just work on different features. Um, many of the teams that I've worked on found that the pair programming part with the other members of the team is one of the best parts about it. So learning how to sort of work with somebody else and work on somebody else's feature, help them out and sort of just be an awesome member of a team. So that's kind of what the first session looks like. And then the following ones, uh, you sort of have the cadence and you can just sort of keep doing what you've um, started and work on additional tickets and give updates about what you worked on and things like that. Cool. So it sounds like a lot about like the process and the collaboration and helping each other out and really communicating is a lot of kind of what you get out of that then. Exactly. Awesome. And so I know that you've written a blog post and you've talked a bit about how the Agile team project and having that experience is like one of the key factors that help students get jobs and really prepare students for jobs. So I guess just kind of taking that um, Agile team project experience that you get and then connecting that to the real world, um, how does that work and like why do you think, how does that relate to the real world and, and what it's like to code on a dev team and why is it so important to have that before you kind of launch out on your programming career? Yeah, I think it's something that is really pretty important. Um, if you look at the dev teams in the real world, it, they're oftentimes between, like most teams have between like four and eight developers on a team, something like that. Um, and the different developers like collaborate together and they do things in the, the same way that we do on the Agile team project and the Firehose project. Uh, we designed it just because we had the experience of working with developers in the real world, so we just made it exactly the, like we took the processes that work in the real world and we applied it there. And the ability to sort of have that draw from that experience and being able to talk about from like a first person perspective about how you worked with other people and how you collaborated with other people and how you helped people on the pull requests and things like that, it just maps really well to the real world. So it helps in interviews when you're talking about when, what experience do you have coding. It helps on day one of the your job when you actually get hired so you actually know what to expect and you don't get thrown into the deep end and not know how to work with other people. And it just all around prepares you to actually be a high impact employee on day one. So it's something that we're really excited about and it, it helps pe people um, in a lot of different ways. So it's something that's really helpful. Um, cool. Well, that was great. It's great to hear a little bit more about the team project. And that's a big part of our program and what really kind of also helps our students really build confidence as they're going out and applying for their first jobs as developers because they have that experience. and They kind of know what to expect when they land their first role. So if you have any questions about that, definitely let us know. Happy to chat about it more. Um, but that was great, Ken. Thank you so much for joining. Cool. Thanks so much, guys. Good one. Cool, so we'll go into the rest of the info session um, and kind of chatting about the rest of our program and coding. Um, so if you're here, you're probably, I know we have a couple people from the full program already, so hello everyone. Um, but you're probably thinking about getting into coding and so let's talk a little bit about why uh, you might wanna get into coding and why it's important and relevant. Um, so there's a saying that software is eating the world and people have been, talking about that a lot and is that true and is that still true or will it be true in 10 years? Um, it's more true now than ever. So if you look at all of the things, all the innovations that are going on, we've got SpaceX, we've got um, Google or Alphabet and Tesla um, building self-driving cars and looking at like connected driving in cities and all of these um, connected technologies and programming is at the root of all that. So all of those uh, innovations have developers that are writing code to make those things possible. And those opportunities and innovations are only, you know, just beginning. If you look at what we've had, like our uh, progress through innovations in the last five or 10 years, and think about what's going to be the next five or 10 years, it's pretty mind blowing. So these jobs are really in demand and these technologies are really in demand. Um, but you've also got more traditional industries that are looking to automate things and they're looking to be more efficient. And most of them are turning to programming and writing in programs to automate processes and make things more efficient. Um, and so they're looking for people that are really skilled at those types of, of work. Um, and so what it's like to be a programmer. So Ken spoke about it a little bit in the kind of dynamics of it and working on a team. Um, but I think what some people don't always realize is that programming and coding is actually a really creative role. So you're creating things with code, with writing, 
um, that creates an output or an interaction wasn't there before. And so a lot of it is, it's really fulfilling to programmers because it's all about problem solving and logical, critical thinking. Um, and it's very much kind of like puzzles and fitting things together. And so it's looking at problems and opportunities and challenges and figuring out how to address those with code. Um, so I think a lot of people when they're first starting off are pretty surprised that it's, it's not, you know, as abstract and mathy, it's actually pretty logical um, and creative. And so we've had a lot of students that have made really incredible apps both in our program and post-graduation um, that are just so creative and interesting and we're definitely going to share some of those with you, so we're excited about that. Um, so if this all sounds good and you're thinking of learning how to code, there's a lot of options out there. So there's definitely kind of the more traditional four-year computer science degree, um, which is, you know, obviously a pretty big time and financial investment. Um, and then with the Firehose project, we've got the online boot camp model. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about that and what that means and how that's set up um, and why you might want to learn online and how to code. Um, so I guess to start, we'll go back a little bit to the beginning of how Firehose Project got started. So our co-founders, Ken, who is just here, and Marco, um, who are CTO and CEO, respectively, both have a background in education. Um, and we're just really passionate about teaching and about programming and about helping people turn their ideas into reality and giving them the tools to be able to do so. So they actually both got started teaching um, and we started the Firehose Project as in-person intensive boot camps and we taught at a bunch of universities like Harvard, um, RISD, Babson, Carnegie Mellon, um, Brown, a bunch of others. And what that allowed was we got a really fast feedback loop on how students learn best and how they really pick up these concepts and what makes things click. And so from that, um, as we scaled out the program and created an online boot camp, we were able to take all of those learnings and develop it into a curriculum and a platform that has all the best aspects of you know, teaching in person with all the best aspects of online boot camp. So that um, you're no longer kind of bound to that old school lecture type teaching where you've got one instructor and a handful of students or where you have more of like an apprentice um, mentor style and because what that does is it kind of limits you to the pace of the classroom so if you are um, you know picking things up really quickly and you're you're doing really well a lot of times in that classroom setting you're going to be held back to the pace of the classroom and you're not going to be able to continue challenging yourself and really excelling there and on the contrary if you're challenged with something um, you know you can get help but you're kind of also fighting for the attention of that instructor that's helping out the entire rest of the course as well um, so with our program we really allow you to move more at your own pace. So we give you, you know, weekly um, goals and tasks to stay on track, and that's something that um, we can we can talk a little bit more about later. But um, but that being said, you put in the hours and you can spend the time on the things that are more challenging for you, um, and you can move more quickly through the things that come easier to you. And what we have also been able to do is develop a curriculum and a platform that provides the right content at the right time. So what that means is that once you've completed a certain amount of lessons and then we'll give you little challenges throughout the way, and when you complete that challenge, we'll ping you and say, okay, now is a great time to watch this overview video. And this video is gonna tie everything that you just did together and like help you move on for the next steps of what we're gonna be teaching. So let's take a few minutes and watch these videos and then we'll continue working on the lessons and building out this project. So it's a very dynamic curriculum that provides the right content at the right time. Click for our students. Um, and so another benefit of that is that we have students all over the world. So we have students in various countries and time zones um, with all different types of schedules and other obligations. Um, and you can really code when it makes sense for you. So you can put in the hours when you have time, um, whether it's in the evenings or the mornings or weekends. Um, and that also means that you get to connect with a really diverse community of other students. So like I said, we have students all over the world and we also have students from all different backgrounds. So we have students who um, you know, have been IT technicians, we have students who are stay-at-home parents, we have 
um, people who have worked as a receptionist or a front desk, a warehouse manager. Um, and then we also have students that have been developers. So we've had companies like Google and Adobe put their students through our program to learn new languages and learn new technologies um, or move from you know, a product manager role to a developer role and stuff like that. So we have a huge variety of backgrounds both in their technical experience and in kind of previous career experience. Um, and definitely one of the benefits of, <clears throat> of the course is that you get to interact with all of those different types of people and really benefit from you know, learning from their backgrounds. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, as you're coding online, one of the really important things to help you progress and keep learning is the support that you're going to be getting. So you never want to be stuck coding alone. <clears throat> you never want to be stuck getting your wheels spinning of things built into our platform um, to make sure that that doesn't happen. So one of the huge uh, benefits is that you'll be matched with a mentor. So you'll have a one-on-one -on -one mentorship relationship. Um, and all of our mentors are senior programmers. Um, they code every day, and they have years of industry experience. So not only are they there to help you out, but they provide a lot of career guidance and insight. Um, and so the way that we match you with a mentor is when you start the full program, we'll ask you a few questions about your background and your goals. Um, and we actually match you with a mentor that's going to bring the most to the table given that information. And so meet with your mentor regularly. And that's a time when you can, you can really use it for, for whatever you like. But you can go over challenges from the week. And you can use that time to pair program with a mentor. So it's really, really valuable that you get to actually pair program with a senior developer as you're learning how to code. Um, and that's a huge takeaway from the program that our students get. Um, and then if you're, you know, if you're, if you didn't have as many challenges and you're really doing well in the program and you're excelling, you can also use that time to deep dive into other topics with your mentor or go back and write tests into your previous code. Um, so it can be very much like, so you get as much, um, and you kind of are able to structure that and get what you need out of those sessions. Um, <clears throat> so that's a huge part of the kind of support and career guidance. And then we also have kind of day to day as you're going through the lessons and you're coding. There are going to be, you know, a million times that you get stuck and half the time, you know, might be a typo or it might be a comma in the right place or incorrect spacing. Or maybe you're not quite grasping the concept that you're working on. And so as you're going through the platform, we don't want you to get stuck because of an incorrect comma um, or a typo. So we actually have a forum at the bottom of each lesson where you can ask questions. And what's great about that format is you can take screenshots or copy and paste your code in that. And then we have our firehose engineers and ambassadors um, and team monitoring that forum to get you really quick replies um, so that we can help you out. And they'll be able to look at your code and give you help so that you're not stuck spinning your wheels because of a little error. Um, that being said, they'll also let you know if it's something that you can look up. And they'll say, hey, here's actually a resource that you can probably answer that question. Why don't you check that out? And we'll touch base if you're still confused. Um, so we're very much like teaching you how to fish. And that's a huge part of our teaching mentality, because that's what's going to set you up for success in a role as a developer. Um, so yeah, another huge piece of it is getting consistent code reviews from engineers. And this is what really helps our students excel their coding, um, their coding skills, is that throughout the whole program, you're going to be working on building out several projects. Um, and so as you're building those out, you're going to have the help from the forum, and you're going to have the help from your mentor. But you're also going to be getting your code reviewed by an engineer who has a ton of experience. And they're going to be helping you things with like refactoring your code to make it um, more sophisticated and more clean or more concise so that your programs run faster. Um, they're going to be helping you out with making your code really sophisticated. And every time that you get that code review, it's a, it's a really great learning experience. And so actually, in our free uh, boot camp prep course, we start off, um, you'll do a few challenges. And we give code reviews to students even in that boot camp prep course, because that's a huge part of our prep platform. And it's a huge part of the learning process. Um, and so those are really beneficial and, and really help you kind of level up there. Um, so we also hold weekly office hours for full program students. Um, Ken and Marco host those. And so that's a time when you can call into a video chat 
um, kind of similar to this, but it'll be a little bit more two-way, and you'll be able to ask your questions and talk about your experience, things that may be challenging, um, and then it's an amazing time also to hear other students' questions and their experiences, and really connect with that community and put faces to names um, that you've been seeing in the community channels and stuff like that, um, and so, and then get your questions answered, obviously, by Ken and Marco, um, them and, and engage in that community. Um, and then I guess lastly, we kind of, we also have um, Slack and community channels. And so that's where you can connect with other students. We have mentors and alumni in there. Um, and so you'll be able to connect with students and really ask your questions, um, share experiences. We've got students sharing their blog posts, sharing their project ideas. There's just a ton of chatter going on in there. And so you're always um, able to connect with the community and um, you're able to see in the platform what students are coding on the same lessons as you and find them in Slack so you can ask questions and you know share your experience as well. Um, and then lastly, of course, the team project, which Ken was just speaking about. Um, so our team project, you are going to be working with other Firehose students. You'll have a team lead who's a Firehose mentor. And you're having weekly check-ins with them, um, going over types of things like what you worked on last week, what you're getting you know, challenged with, what might be blocking you from continuing with certain features that you're building out, um, what you're gonna work on next week, and kind of coordinating all of that and moving forward as a team. So you get a lot of support in that sense as well, in addition to you know, the, the office hours and your mentor sessions um, and all of that. Going into a little bit um, our actual program and curriculum and what you'll be learning in the, in the course. So, we start students off with a boot camp prep course. Um, and so if you haven't signed up for that, you should definitely check it out. It's free. You'll get to write um, some HTML and CSS, and you'll actually start writing Ruby programs right away. And like I said, we'll give you code reviews. So we'll take a look at your programs when you submit them and let you know, you know how it could be refactored to be more concise and cleaner code. Um, and then you'll also have access to help in the forum. So we're always there to help you out. Um, and so that boot camp prep course gives you kind of a taste of what our full program is like, and it also acts as our acceptance process. So you actually have to go through and complete the challenges, um, and then once we review all of those and give you the thumbs up, we can accept you into our full program, um, and then you can join us to keep your coding education going and keep plugging away um, at your new career. And so we can um, take a look at that as well. Um, and then so for our full program, we have the content built out. So um, it's really kind of a hybrid. So we focus a bit on kind of a text-based curriculum. Um, and so the reason is that as you're working as a programmer in your first career, in your first job, um, you're going to be getting written documentation of how to work with an API, how to you know, use new frameworks, stuff like that. And we always want to prepare you for those real-world situations. So our curriculum and the way that we set up our whole course is designed to give you those experiences so that when you are going out and applying for your first job and starting your first job, it's, it's more familiar to you. You're more comfortable with those types of workflows. Um, teach by doing. And so as we're going through all the lessons, um, you're going to be building out various uh, apps and programs that you're hosting online. You're taking from the full process of wireframing to programming and getting code review and refactoring and then launching it. And so you have this end-to-end -end experience and then of course you graduate with a coding portfolio. Um, so you'll have a custom portfolio that you build out and you'll have a GitHub profile um, that you can share with employers and really highlight your code. And then as Ken was saying, you'll also be able to speak to the experience of the Agile team project and that workflow and really demonstrate that you're able to hit the ground running um, and be an, a really effective member of a team on day one. Um, so the whole platform is designed to really simulate those real world uh, situations and processes um, and, and also have you graduate with an awesome coding portfolio. Um, so that being said, let's take a look at some of the um, at the platform, and so you can take a look at the lessons. And I'm gonna to switch to a screen share now, and I'm really excited to share um, some of the lessons with you. So just one moment while I set that up. 
and then we'll take a look at what the what the um, dashboard looks like and some of the lessons and kind of how we set up our curriculum. So let's see. I'll switch to a screen share. Okay. So you should be able to see this screen now. Um, and so this is our dashboard. Um, and so you can see that I'm not very far, I haven't made it very far in the full program here. So you'll have a timeline. Um, and this shows your progress and it's going to show you how you're doing. Um, and these are these weekly goals that I mentioned. And so we give you uh, weekly goals so that you can really help hold yourself accountable. Um, and you can check these off and we help you keep on track because although it is self-paced. Um, we want to keep you on track. We want to keep your learning going, and we want you to be able to hold yourself accountable. So in the dashboard um, for the full program, you'll see all of these apps um, that you're going to be building out. And so this is how our curriculum is structured. So it's very project-based. Um, so you'll see, like, you'll build a quote generator, um, build a Yelp clone, a video streaming platform, and so on. And I'll show you examples of some of these, but let's dive into this Yelp clone and let's see what the lessons actually look like. Um, so we'll open this up. It's called Nomster. Um, and so here are the lessons. So you'll see we're starting you off from the very beginning. So actually that's with a Rails 5 upgrade. So we always are using the most up-to-date um, technologies. And so right up here, you'll be able to see the classmates that are working on this track, and you'll be able to find them in Slack um, and chat with your classmates. So over here are, is an overview of all the lessons that you'll be going through and the features that you'll be building out. So if you think of the Yelp app, um, you've got a bunch of features in there, like user authentication, um, Google Maps, so you're working with APIs here, adding comments, sending email notifications. Um, so let's take a look at one of these. So let's take a look at uh, user authentication. So you've got all of these different, um, you know, lessons that you're building out for those, and you've got a challenge at the end. Um, so it's adding, so you're building out these features and then, um, you know, working through as you're building out your own app, and, and it, the curriculum very much maps to how that actually builds out every single feature so that you graduate um, with these apps built out uh, from the ground up. And so we also have challenges built throughout and then videos. And so this is where um, for some of our larger concepts, we have video instruction. So rather than just text-based, um, which this is what that kind of looks like over here, um, we're going to give you some videos to go over some of the bigger um, overview concepts. So this one is on object-oriented programming. And so you'll see if you click into these um, that we've got these great videos that um, we've built out from our platform that are going to really give you a more in-depth overview um, of what these lessons look like. Um, and so that really helps as well, having these varied like curriculum styles. And then, as I mentioned, you've got the forum down here where you can ask questions, and we're always going to help you out really quickly. And so that's at the bottom of every lesson. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the apps that students have built. Um, so this is an awesome app by one of our students, Justin. Um, and so this is called the Splurdy app. And basically, it's a database-powered quote generator. And Justin built this out, so all students will build this out within the first week of the program. So obviously, you're building full stacks. So you can design and add you know, this front end, um, features, logos, stuff like that. Um, and then what we're doing here is we're building an app that stores quotes um, in a database and then generates them uh, to the user. And so you'll see here, um, it's lagging a little bit because I have this open for too long, I think. Um, but you'll see here that you can contribute, you can add your own quotes, and then you can get more quotes. And so Justin chose, he loves being outdoors and hiking and exploring, so he chose John Muir themed quotes. So if any of you have a good, outdoor themed quote, especially Muir, go ahead and, and you can contribute that. Um, so here's another one from an outdoor enthusiast. Um, so this student loves climbing, and this is a um, sort of like a Yelp, this is a Yelp clone app, and so it's basically compiling all of these great climbing locations, and so it gives you all the, 
all the beta. If you're a climbing um, enthusiast, you'll know what that means. And so it's giving you basically all the details on these climbs, and you can add um, comments, and you can rate them. Um, and so basically it's compiling just a whole bunch of awesome places to climb, and it's a really cool resource for people that are looking uh, to go climbing. I was actually in Bishop a few weeks ago, and it was awesome. So as you can see here. <laughs> Um, and here's another one that a student built out. Um, he's really into photography, and so he built out actually a course hub that teaches students um, how to, you know, how to do travel photography and use Photoshop. And so you can take a look at these um, lessons and you know purchase lessons. So it's a, a marketplace as well. Um, and so this is a, a great app that this student built out. Um, We'll go in here. These are all lagging, unfortunately, because I had them open for so long. But um, so you can see that this student built out like a whole bunch of different features. There's a sign in. Um, there's you know uh, a marketplace here, thought loads, um, and then the final app that you'll build in the team project, which Ken was talking about, is the chess app. And so as Ken was mentioning. We chose a chess app because it's a much more complex app. So I'll spare you guys from starting a game and watching me fail uh, fail miserably at chess right now. But the, if you think about chess, there's a ton of logic in how all the pieces are legally able to move and you know how to test for checkmate, um, stuff like that. So you'll build out this chess app. Um, and then we have you build out a website that really uh, highlights your code so that you're able to show this to future employers and um, you know show some of the some of the moves that um, and code that you've written for that. Um, so now that's a couple of the um, of the apps that students have built. So let's go back to the platform. Um, and so another huge part of our program is the job preparation. So we have a ton of lessons that give you job preparation skills um, that actually are tangible, actionable items that um, you can learn from. So for many who have not gone into a, a career as a developer before, it can be really intimidating. So the technical interview, like what even is that and how do you prepare for it? So we give you all of these um, lessons on what to expect, how to you know optimize your um, your portfolio and your your resume and your um, cover letter and how to build out a developer brand and what to do as you're you know applying for the for the job. So if you're looking into you know some of these lessons, um, we'll take a look here and give you a little preview um, of what some of these lessons look like. So they're really um, they're really detailed, and so we're going to go into things like salary negotiation and you know how to interview best practices. Um, and so those are definitely some you know some kind of basic things that um, we're taking you through the whole process there. Um, and so here's one for example: we have interview mistakes. So let's look at just one of these. Um, so first mistake, and we built we we built these out and these lessons out actually with feedback from hiring managers and technical recruiters. So these are things that we heard directly from companies that you know they gave us feedback from interviews that they have. So for example, mistake number one. Here's a preview. Nobody hires aspiring developers. So nobody, you know, as an example. Um, if you're looking to get a haircut and someone says, I'll cut your hair, I'm a hairdresser, versus I'll cut your hair, I want to be a hairdresser, you're going to be like, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. So what this point is, is you know, just because you just went through a boot camp and you know, you haven't, maybe you're looking for your first job as a developer, be confident and talk about yourself confidently and talk about your skills confidently. Um, you know, we'll, talk, we'll teach you about how to talk about things you don't know and how to you know, work with questions that you might not know right away as well. But um, we're giving you tons of tips like this and how to nail that interview and just do a great job there. Um, and so obviously, a uh, the mentorship is a, a really big part of this as well because as you're meeting with your mentor, um, you're going to be able to really talk with them about you know what skills they would need for somebody to you know to hire somebody on their team. Um, so that's a huge part of it as well. And ultimately, what's you know the most important about um, for, as you're applying for jobs is that you've got a solid portfolio, a solid GitHub profile, and you can really demonstrate your technical ability. 
And then that you're going to be a good team player and that you're going to be able to hit the ground running on a team, know about the workflows and the communication and stuff like that. Um, and so that is a huge part of what our program prepares you for. Um, so we'll go ahead and go back to um, the live broadcast now. Um, and so we'll have a chance to answer some questions. Um, and so one last thing that we're super excited about is we actually just recently launched our advanced uh, programming course as well. And so this is actually meant to be a um, kind of like a graduate program for our students. And so what that is, is we're constantly adding new material. Um, and so you can check that out um, online, but we're constantly adding new materials for advanced topics. So like JavaScript frameworks, SQL, um, and you know, we're adding that frequently. Um, and so that's something that as you're graduating from the Firehose project and you're looking for jobs or as you're starting your first job, you're able to continue brushing up on your skills and continue learning because the best programmers never stop learning and they're always looking for the next technology and what's going to really make them a high impact employee and a high impact programmer. Um, and as technology is always changing, there's always a lot to learn there. Um, so in short, I guess we can go back to kind of um, an overview and just kind of wrap this up. So with the Firehose project, what kind of sets us apart and what, what makes us different than other coding boot camps? Um, so I think to start, it's, it's the depth of our curriculum. So not only do we teach you all the skills that you need to build out um, things like you know, a Yelp clone or like an Instagram clone, um, so you know, commenting, rating systems, working with APIs, but we focus a lot on computer science fundamentals as well. So we focus on algorithms, um, writing really good tests into your code, and we have that kind of in-classroom background and know how to bring all of those concepts, those really big concepts into play and, and really teach them so that they click for our students. Um, and then obviously the topic of the day, the Agile Team Project, so that's a huge part of what gets our students leveled up and gets them really in the workforce and as really competitive candidates. Um, and so that, you know, Ken talked about that. Um, that's a huge part of our program that really sets us apart. And, you know, you're working with that team for two months, um, and that, that's a really kind of intensive process, and you get really embedded in that process. Um, and then it's also our coordinated support. So we've got the Firehose team, we've got amazing mentors, office hours, dedicated forum support. Um, so you're never left hanging and you get that support when you need and you never get stuck and you're always able to kind of level up and continue learning and improving. Um, and, and then I have to say the community of our students, we've got awesome students that are doing really incredible things. Um, and we're always helping each other out and you know, chatting with each other and reviewing code and blog posts and pair programming and stuff like that. Um, so that is a huge part and that's something that we definitely feel here at the Firehose Project. And then our students have said time and time again is that this community that they're kind of tapped into and then still have access to as alumni um, is really pretty, pretty awesome. Um, so with that, that is, that is the info session today, and I'm definitely um, happy to take questions. And so I'm sure I think we've got some questions already via email. Um, so let me pull up some of the questions. And if you haven't submitted any yet and you have some, feel free to send those over. Um, and so just one moment. I pull that up for you guys. All right, so I know we've got a couple questions already. Let me grab this. We'll get the questions that have been coming in live for us. Okay, <clears throat> so let's take a look. So we've got from Saeed, how does code review pair programming um, work with a remote setup? I thought that's part of the agile teamwork. Um, yeah, awesome question. So um, the Agile Team Project is set up to work as a remote team. Um, and one of the things that's really interesting is so we're definitely seeing a lot of dev teams are working remotely now. And so we've got teams that, um, you know, work in different states and different countries, different time zones for sure. 
Um, and so actually part of our part of our firehose team is remote as well. And so we use all of these tools that we're talking about in the, you know, in the remote work um, and in the agile team project. Um, so some things like that are we're using Google Hangouts um, a lot for face-to-face -face meetings and use Slack a lot. And so Slack is something that actually, even for teams that are working um, together in, you know, in one office or in one space, um, the benefit of Slack is that you can have these community channels, um, so like a coding channel or, um, you know, a staging channel that, you know, talks about who's using staging, stuff like that. And so you can really collaborate. So rather than just talking to the person next to you, you can post it in Slack and still get that answer from that person, but you can share that experience and that knowledge so that it's searchable and your whole team can kind of benefit from that communication. So things like Slack um, and then, yeah, Google Hangouts, um, those types of technologies, and those are the types of things that allow you to also do screen share, prepare programming, um, and so all of that works remotely, definitely in our program, and then most teams are using all those technologies as well, whether they're remote teams or not. Um, so I hope that answers your question. That's a great question. Um, and then we have, let's see, another question. Um, okay, cool. So I'm a PM interested in deepening technical experience. Um, always wanted to learn to code. Would this work for me, or is it for people that want to work as full-time developers? Um, so that's a great question. So we have people from kind of all different backgrounds, and we have had um, product and project managers that work with technical teams going through our program. Um, and actually, that's we've had some companies sending their employees who are more product manager or project managers um, through our program because it's going to help as you're working with these teams to know um, not only the, the technologies and how how they're really building things out and how they're thinking about breaking down problems and when you're working in, when you're talking about products on kind of a higher level how the dev team is thinking about breaking that down into kind of tasks and items that they're going to actually be programming so that's one benefit and then back to the team project topic of the day um, it really helps you understand their workflow as well and so how to communicate with dev teams how to um, how to you know how they're structuring their sprint cycle stuff like that um, and so it really helps you to kind of manage those teams on a sprint cycle and as you're creating products um, so we've definitely had both you know people that are looking to transition careers into programming as well as people that are looking to work um, with programmers and manage products manage teams stuff like that so um, definitely a good fit and you know, feel free to send me any other questions that you have, or if you want to chat further, we can we can do that as well. Um, so let's see, we have another question. Um, as a beginner, can we start with the Agile Team project, or do we have to first complete the initial curriculum? Um, awesome question. So uh, the Agile Team project is the last eight weeks of the program. Um, the reason being, you're working as a team with all of your other teammates, obviously, on a very complex app. And so you're working with algorithms and you're writing in complex tests and stuff like that. Um, and so in order to have a really fully functioning team, you kind of all need to have that core curriculum where you're learning how to work with algorithms and how to um, write tests for your code and how to use you know, object-oriented programming and learn that full stack development education so that then you're able to connect as a team and work on a really challenging project um, and you know, focus on that um, and learn the communication and the coordination as a team as well. Um, so to answer your question, you do have to go through the core curriculum um, and you do actually need to complete that in order to be eligible for the team project. And that's both for, for your benefit um, and for your teams as well. So everybody on the team is really kind of dedicated to that. And it's a, it's a you know, it's a really intensive um, project. Hmm. So I think we have another question as well. Um, so this one was emailed in, and it is um, about which languages to start with. Um, so yeah, great question. So this is one we definitely get a lot. Um, so when you're learning to code, one thing that, um, oh, I just saw that. Good, I'm glad I was able to answer your question. Um, so when you're learning to code, uh, a lot of people, when they're starting off, or you know, there's all these different languages, and you're maybe not really sure which one to start with, or what's gonna be the best for helping you get a job. Um, and I think a couple different things. I mean, so I can definitely talk about the languages that we teach and why. Um, 
But ultimately, I think it's actually less important which language you're learning and more that you're learning these fundamentals of how to write really good tests for your code um, and how to work as a team and then how to approach problems with a problem solving and logical kind of mindset. Um, and of course, you're doing that with code. So we start by teaching Ruby on Rails. Um, the reason why we do that is Ruby reads a bit more like English, so the syntax is a little bit easier to understand. So it's a lot easier to start off writing really powerful programs with Ruby. So um, that's why we start off with that, because it's a really versatile language, and it lets our students create a number of apps um, creating those very quickly, and it really increases that learning curve. Um, it also acts as a great springboard into JavaScript, which we teach as well. So we do also teach JavaScript in depth, and so you will build out, for example, a whole app um, from the ground up in JavaScript, and you'll have, get a really uh, a lot of great experience with that um, as well. And so we teach those two languages, and then we also, as I mentioned, focus a lot on computer science fundamentals. We focus a lot on algorithms and working with data structures and writing tests. Um, and then, like I said, what's most important is that you have a great portfolio um, and that you have you know, this kind of real world experience that you can relate to as you're going out to interviews. Um, so I guess if I can give a student example of that, we actually had a student that graduated um, and went off and applied for a job as an iOS developer. Um, and so that was not something that we kind of directly taught. Um, but she went out and applied for the job and had a great portfolio and you know, did a great first interview. And they gave her a take home interview challenge to basically build an iOS app in, I believe, a week. Um, so again, that's not something that we directly taught, but what we gave her was the ability to kind of think logically and break down large objectives into smaller tasks. And then it's just a matter of looking up the differences in syntax and the differences um, in you know, the technology that, that she was using. And so she was able to actually do that, um, made an iOS app in a week, and got the job. And so that's a great example of how it's a lot more kind of the problem solving and the, the fundamental skills um, and, and getting that practice of real world coding and really developing apps on your own and going through that process from end to end. Um, so I think those are all the questions that we got today. Thank you guys so much for joining. If you have any other questions, send them to questions at thefirehoseproject.com. Um, again, my name is Brita. I'll be answering any of those questions that you send in, so feel free to holler. And thank you guys so much. It was awesome chatting with you today. Have a good one.